Ladies and gentlemen, honorable dignitaries, and those present with us in this room, it is a real uh, pleasure and honor for me to be able to be the moderator for this uh, panel. I have sat through the day's delegations, which of course included those uh, ideas that came across in terms of the realities of doing business and what more needs to be done. It is my absolute pleasure to have these honorable panelists with me. Thank you again for being a part of this. As we have repeatedly expressed, connectivity is a key theme that has been running through this entire dialogue. We have spoken about the measures that have been taking place so far and perhaps the gaps that still need to be filled. I would like to start this panel by asking a critical question. What is it that it's going to take to really accelerate the measures of connectivity between India and its ASEAN partners? Because we've seen some flagship projects that are still uh, in the process of development. We understand they're going to be coming through on certain timelines. But what it is that you feel would really help in speeding up those uh, particular measures? Please go ahead. Assam is a gateway to the Northeastern region, has been emerging as the regional business hub. So for connectivity, you have heard about the Steelwell Road. Steelwell Road was constructed during the Second World War and connecting Myanmar and China with India. So I feel that this, some part of this road can be developed to improve our connectivity with the ASEAN region and beyond. Thank you. Thank you very much. In fact, uh, I would like my uh, honorable panelists to please come in uh, on that. We've already looked at those measures that are being taken at this stage. What, it, what more do you really feel can be done to accelerate given the experience we've had so far, sir? We can go by one. one. So uh, on behalf of the uh, Vietnam delegation, I would like to say a few words on the uh, connectivity. In our view, connectivity is, uh, play a key role in the ASEAN community building, and it's also uh, very important to the strategic partnership between ASEAN and India. So, uh, therefore, we are very pleased to see the progress made in the ASEAN-India connectivity in all three dimensions, uh, namely the physical, institutional, and people-to-people -people connectivities. In um, physical connectivity, we welcome the outcome of the second ASEAN-India connectivity co coordinating community uh, com uh, committee meeting in Myanmar last year, which conveyed a list of six projects to help better connect India with ASEAN, both by road, air, and sea. In particular, we expect India to extend um, your assistance in extending the, in, 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 in imp implementing the India Myanmar Thai Thailand trilateral highway uh, further eastward to Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam. We hope that it will have another, uh, India will have, will organize another ASEAN India Kareli that will go on the way from India to Vietnam in the near future. In terms of institutional connectivity, 
we are glad to see that two important agreements have been signed, namely the ASEAN India Agreement on Trade and Service and ASEAN India Agreement on, on Investment. We strongly believe that the, together with existing institutional arrangement, these agreements will help boost significantly the trade and investment between ASEAN and India. Another important institutional arrangement also on trade and investment that ASEAN and India are embarking on together with other major economies in East Asia, that is the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. We hope that with ASEAN and India cooperation, enough progress can be made in the next rounds of negotiations so that we can conclude this agreement by the end of this year as our leaders have uh, instructed. Besides the uh, physical and institutional connectivity, we also appreciate India's efforts and assistance in bringing our people closer together through different initiatives and programs including the daily dialogue, the student exchange programs, the special course for ASEAN diplomats, the ASEAN India media exchange program, or the ASEAN India young farmers exchange program. And we are looking forward to more of those programs as our partnership continue to grow and expand in the future. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you, sir, for those for those inputs. I would just like to uh, really create uh, the dialogue and take it take it forward. The same question, really, that I have, which is that we we have now seen a dialogue proceed. We've also seen some of those measures that are being taken, whether it's physical connectivity, whether it's road, uh, air, so on and so forth. What are your expectations, sir, from the near future? Uh, Excellency. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is a great pleasure for me to uh, be assigned by my uh, Deputy uh, Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs to attend this uh, uh, New Delhi Dialogue uh, 7. And uh, it is also a great pleasure uh, for me to intervene in this uh, auspicious uh, meeting. Uh, connectivity is very important. It is even crucial because it helped the fast growth region, which is ours, to even um, uh, grow and uh, to uh, extend our relationship uh, beyond uh, the region. Connectivity uh, as uh, many uh, um, People have said already that connectivity includes infrastructure, inti institutional, and people's to people's connectivity. But at the same time, we also have to uh, interpret the policy into uh, concrete measures. And uh, this uh, will uh, engage a lot of investment and uh, government alone cannot achieve. Therefore, uh, I, am, uh, uh, I feel very great that uh, we have, uh, for this dialogue, um, the private sector and the business community, the think tank uh, community and the media who are all present. And from this morning, I have heard many uh, good ideas, especially uh, coming from the deputy um, section of ASEAN, who mentioned that between ASEAN and India, we have all the necessary and fundamental agreements, projects, even the ASEAN uh, India Fund. But uh, as of today, we still have a lot to do. We haven't yet achieved all the existing potentials that 
ASEAN and India have. Therefore, uh, it is uh, also a very crucial uh, time for the business community and for the private sector to think over and try to, com uh, to complete, uh, to be the complement uh, to the uh, government uh, to concretize this uh, great scheme of great connectivity between the ASEAN region and India. Uh, as you may be aware that the trade volume is increasing in the region. The East Asia region, ASEAN region, uh, is increasing in a very significant manner. It is also uh, great to, uh, uh, to uh, have appreciation that India also look east and now even act east. And I uh, have a great expectation that thanks to this policy, the trade and the exchange of goods and services between our region will increase significantly. But in order to do so, we have to build up the physical institutional and people's to people's connectivity in the region. And there are many channels to do. With regard to Laos, we are in the midst of this uh, uh, inland uh, ASEAN region. We have opened up all the corridors uh, passing through our country. What uh, uh, you, you, you name it, North-South Corridor, East-West Corridor, at all uh, levels we have opened up all the corridors passing through our country in order to boost up the connectivity uh, in the region. And we look forward to uh, attract more investment, more interest from the communi uh, business community and the private sector from India to come over and try to join the train together. Uh, as of today, we are uh, trying to, uh, not only within the framework of ASEAN, but we also have in the region, the GMS, the Greater sure. Mekong Sub-Region uh, Framework. And uh, we work with ADB to uh, develop connectivity in road, transportation, uh, navigation, river navigation and uh, power grid uh, in order to, to sell electricity uh, uh, across the, the border and uh, also the communication uh, connectivity. Therefore, uh, they are great to, to, to do and if you look at investment, we do need a lot of uh, in, uh, investors, including from India to um, uh, invest in this sector. Thank you. Sir, I'm just going to also, because I want this panel to, to move around, we've talked about the kind of stakeholders that are involved, the larger involvement you want as well. And please, I, I want everybody to please come in on this. Uh, it's, it's, private, it's public investments, private, uh, the businesses also, the kind of share of information that we're also talking about. I just want to speak to the chief ministers I have here as well uh, uh, from the Northeast. India's Act East policy, we've, we've spoken about how it is going to benefit your states. How do you see the current situation uh, in terms of this exchange that we're doing with ASEAN? Thank you, sir. I hope that's working. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it must be working. Uh, th thank you very much. Uh, it is a rare privilege to be here in uh, Delhi dialogue and participate the discussions over here regarding the connectivity. I am from Arunachal Pradesh. You know, Arunachal Pradesh is bordering with three international countries, uh, China, Myanmar, and Bhutan. Here, uh, the Look East policy has been now named as uh, Act East policy. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, big hope that this, with this act, and, uh, the act is policy can benefit the development of uh, 
the uh, south asian countries my suggestion would be in this uh, is forum here because all the excellencies are here noticed required lot of thoughts and lot of decisions and it required lot of attentions because the northeast can get a lot of connectivity development in the rest of the uh, asian countries because from northeast if it is uh, circle the radius of 1000 km it comes 10 to 11 countries it can be center of the development in the asian countries my suggestion would be so far the northeast have uh, connectivity of air connectivity at guwahati have uh, uh, only one air link to bangkok but there is no air connectivity to the rest of the uh, southeast asian countries so i want that the air connectivity can link it should be linked to all the countries and in case of uh, the road communications as they have rightly mentioned about the east to west corridors if it can be materialized and make it possible to connect north eastern states can we can generate lot of uh, development not only in the, uh, tourism sure. but many other economic and industrial development so so a lot more really needs to be done i think that's a recurring theme we we we've, we've had repeatedly sir um just to take that forward a little bit in terms of the kind of help say even the local states uh, the, the the northeast states would require at this stage to ensure uh, such such efforts to come through could you tell us a little bit more about that please I'm very happy to give up my mic and just listen. <laughs> In fact, I just have had a visit uh, to Northeast. Okay. Uh, Northeast has a lot of potential. I I must say so. The people in uh, Northeast of uh, India have almost the same. you know culture with the southeast asian people yeah, yeah. the uh, music for example almost the same the way of life way of cultivation but i i i want so must say that there are a lot of still a lot of difficulties there uh only one thing is uh, road connectivity from northeast to myanmar i heard that there's always a short distance to be connected on on between northeast and southeast uh, northeast of india and southeast asia but it could not be completed so i think uh, the first thing we have to do here is the road connectivity so we had to had to get through i uh, i think uh, we uh, there's uh, some difficulties but uh, if we get a partnership very good very focused partnership between uh, the government of india and the private sectors yes then uh, that that key problem can be solved then we can get through a uh, uh, road connectivity first from from india to to southeast asia and and, and yeah. i think that's 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 a theme that we've been discussing that the will is there the cultural affiliations are there the desires there but at this stage how what more what more can we do uh, on that front thank you your excellency i just want to pass uh, the the mic to to of our other panelists who haven't spoken today may i go ahead and do that please would you like to take it yeah thank you sir yes sir um, i would like to mention how asian connectivity is a play important component in the asian community that will emerge at the end of this year connectivity is uh, basically to benefit uh, people of the region uh, 
through its uh, three dimensions, physical connectivity, institutional connectivity, and people-to-people connectivity. People -people connectivity. And then uh, our country, Myanmar, is uh, one of the gateway of the ASEAN and India, so that it is uh, one of the important uh, uh, area of the connectivity. So we have to enhance uh, the connectivity road and other sector, business and investment and other sector, we have to improve for that. If uh, we improve uh, for the connectivity, we can enhance uh, all the sector and business and investment sector also. So it is uh, the most important uh, connectivity of the uh, India and uh, ASEAN. So we have to improve for that. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Minister for External Affairs, Srimati Susma Sorazi, and Excellencies representatives from the South Asian countries, the Honorable Minister of State for External Affairs, General V.K. Singh, my colleague, Chief Minister Arunachal Pradesh. Yes, this seventh daily dialogue would last consecutive to three times. I was fortunately attended such type of dialogue. But from our side also, we are trying to our level best. From the, so far, I represent from Manipur, which is the corner most just neighbor to Myanmar. From the government of India's side, number of steps has been taken up how to increase the volume of business threat uh, between India and South Asian countries. So regarding connectivity, it is one of the most important for connectivity between India and South Asian people, man to man physical connectivity, but without any proper connectivity, whether it may be airways, whether it may be roadways or waterways, it will be next to impossible. From the government of India's side, step has already been taken at More, that is uh, the international boundary town of India's, that is More, located between Tamu and uh, Menmir. Visa on arrival, I think, government of India has been clear, and shortly it will be start functioning. And there is one integrated check post also at More that is already started, but it looks a little slow. If we can give push from the government of India's side, it can be functioned without further delay. And about road connectivity from More to Mandle, we hope Government of India also has given a lot of pressurize. We have from More to Mandle bus service. It can be start without further delay. And about airways, about airways from Delhi to mm -hmm. the Gawati, it took around two and a half hours. And from Gawati to Imphal, that is Manipur Imphal Air, Airport, it took around 45 minutes. From Impal Airport to Mandalay, only one hour. And from Impal to Kunming, the closer province of Myanmar, it took only two and a half hours. So it's too closer between India and South Asian countries, and more particularly Northeast, the, the South Asian countries. So people to people contact already started. In Manipur, there is a annual fees 
that is Shanghai Festival. Last year also, the Chief Minister of Shagang Region and Mandalay Region, we have invited, they came, they participated around one week's time. And from the Thailand also, every year, cultural troops and business communities, they came, they participated there. So slowly, slowly, it has been started closer with Indian and the South Asian countries. So we would like to appeal both the countries. What is the harm? Fortunately, I have visited some of the important countries like Myanmar, the Singapore, the Thailand, Bangkok, including China, Japan also. So like something like Mandalay to Yangon, Bhaya, Nifito, some, something like that type of National Highway, if once we can construct with the cooperation between Myanmar and India. So it can be more closer and the volume of business, it can be increased like anything. Now, the, the, from the Myanmar side, number of patients, they started coming for treatment in Manipur, though it is not internationally standard, facilities is not there, I personally visited in Myanmar with the Sagang region chief minister and treated number of present operation, uh, the about eyes, cataracts, uh, operation service, and s some other smiling face operation also, number of. So the Myanmar, the patient, they start, number of Myanmar patient, they started for treatment in Manipur. We are a little limited. The, the, there are two medical college. One is Central College Resident School of Medical Science. Another is uh, the state-owned medical college. Number of patients started coming for treatment. But problem is connectivity. If once it is started connectivity, proper connectivity from the Impal to Mandalay, it will be more closer and uh, physical contact also will start. And in Manipur Central University, the number of the Myanmar students also, they started coming there, they study there, their literature, and their language also, we have already opened that subject, particularly in Manipur. Sure. So about other connectivity about railway also, from Ziribam to Tupul. This is one of the, I think one of the fastest broad gauge national project with the initiative of the government of India. Now it is, I hope by, uh, 2017, it will reach to Imphal. Then I would like to appeal to the government of India, more particularly honorable extended affairs ministries, ministers for hard attention for extension from Imphal to More. This railway line should be reached up to More so that it can be connected, well connected between the <coughs> South Asian countries. So with this we work, I once again would like to appeal the other South Asian countries, if once this railway line reached to Mandalay and bus service from Imphal to Mandalay, it can easily connect it with the Thailand, then it may be next Laos, Vietnam, it can be easily connected, and then next even China, Japan also, it can be uh, connected. Sure. Sir, thank you very much. I'm afraid uh, there's just as, as, as the tragedy of panel discussions is that there's so much that really needs to be discussed and there, there's, there's such complexities that are involved. I just want to once again thank my honorable panelists who have been uh, a part of this very critical issue and very complex issue, which is connectivity, and we've seen various dimensions of it. Uh, of course, a lot really needs to be done on the front, and we've all acknowledged how it's important not only for us internally uh, as Northeast states in India, but also in terms of the larger dialogue that takes place. Uh, I'm just going to have to conclude this panel for now. Thank you very much for having opened up some of those uh, issues. We are, of course, going to be uh, continuing with the second panel. Thank you once again for all your insights on this. Thank you, uh, Fatima, and thank you to 